Hi there Buick owners, today in your 2021 Buick Encore GX we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's battery disconnect switch. And this is what our battery disconnect system looks like when it's installed. You do get a small high powered solenoid here that will quickly disengage and re-engage the battery power that's going from your battery to your vehicle. Oftentimes a lot of flat toe setups to get your vehicle into a state where it can be pulled behind your motorhome, the battery needs to be disconnected. This will allow us to disconnect the battery with just pressing a button that's located inside of our dash. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but it does some more things than that for us. It also gives us an easy way to keep flat toe components that we need powered up while disconnecting the battery from the vehicle. Because um, if you don't have something like this, when you go to just disconnect like the, the negative side of your post, you've now removed all the grounds on your entire setup and it makes it a lot harder to get like a braking system um, to operate properly because of that. So this is gonna simplify things for us. The post here on the left is connected directly to the battery positive post on our battery. The post on our right is connected directly to the cable that would normally connect to the battery positive on the vehicle but is now connected to our solenoid here. So our solenoid simply takes that battery cable that goes on your battery post connects it and disconnects it for us. This post here is always gonna be live because it's always hooked to the battery. So even when we disconnect our battery with our switch for our flat toe mode, we can hook up all of our braking system components and anything else, maybe like a charge line, anything that we need to have powered up for our flat toe setup, we can connect right here. So it's, that's really kind of to me why it's got a lot of value is that not only is it a quick way to disconnect the battery for flat towing, but it really makes your installation process a whole lot easier, simplifies it, and it, to me, it's just gonna give you the best um, satisfaction for a flat toe setup. Let's head inside and take a look at the button. So here we are in the vehicle. This is the button for our battery disconnect. It's got a nice chrome button. It blends in pretty much with any color uh, due to it being chrome. It's pretty flush, so it doesn't stick out very far. And you can install it really wherever you've got enough space for the button to fit, as long as you've got area behind it. Uh, the button does extend in maybe about an inch, so you want to probably have about an inch clearance behind it to make your connections and mount your button up. It's a nice smooth momentary switch, so we'll push the button, it'll go in and out, and it'll activate. Currently, we've got our vehicle powered up. The lights are on. You can kind of see that if we sc scroll up a little here. There's a light li uh, lit up right here on the button here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this, and we've lost all power to the vehicle. All of our lights turned out. If we press the button once again, that'll re-engage the battery, putting us back into a state where we can drive it. We can hear the components start to energize and everything's up and running. So you can see how quick and easy that is. No longer do you need to pop your hood, head under there and start to disconnect stuff. And I uh, hope that your flat toe is all gonna be successful. This way you're in a lot, you have a lot of control over everything and the how you've got your powers and grounds all hooked up and you've got just a simplified process with the button. We'll begin our installation here under the hood. We need to get our solenoid mounted up. So here's the solenoid that comes in your kit. It's got these little ears that hang off the side and you do get some different fasteners. You have some options, whether you want to nut and bolt it or use self-tapping screws. We opted to just use the self-tapping screws that it came with, a 10 millimeter socket, and then we can just run these directly into place here. Just zip, zip right into here. And this is a pretty good spot right here. Um, it's kind of next to your battery, so it's close by, so our cables are gonna reach. And there's a pretty big opening clearing here, uh, so that way there's nothing here that's gonna accidentally touch any of these components. Because for example, uh, one of these is gonna be hooked directly to the battery. So this is gonna be live all the time, being hooked to the battery on, on one of these sides. So after you've got it mounted up, we can start hooking it up. You do have a few wires coming off of it. You've got a white wire here that comes off. That's gonna to go to ground that we'll hook up. You've got this gray wire here uh, that's coming off of it. That's for the switch that's gonna activate it. We're gonna route that inside. There's a grommet down there that we'll, we'll show you. It's probably easier to see um, potentially on the inside where it comes through. And then you have two red cables and those are gonna to go to our battery and also to the cable that powers, goes to power our vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up here. Our fuse, our uh, fuse box lid here sitting on top of our battery just pops right off here with these two tabs. We can just set that aside. And I've already got them hooked up, but you can see here how I've hooked them up. Your two large red cables on your solenoid are gonna be labeled. One is labeled battery cable, and the other one, the label's kind of wrapping around the side there, is labeled battery post. 
the battery post needs to hook exactly like it says to the battery post. So this is our battery right here, the positive post. That's the clamp. This metal tab here was folded over and connected here, so that way the positive of your battery post would go through this metal tab, through this, to all the fuses into your vehicle. So I simply removed this nut with a 13 millimeter socket, and I removed the nut over here, this on this little stud here, with a 10 millimeter socket. I did also use my 10 millimeter socket just to loosen up the nut here on the post clamp, just because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room, so it makes it easier to maneuver these components. After that, I just took this metal tab, slid it off, just bent it about 90 or about 180 degrees there, bent it over, and slid it over this stud. And before I reinstalled the nut, I did take the battery cable label here and slide that over the post and then just retighten it back down. If you have any other components that was attached there, make sure you reattach those. So our, you can see here there was a fuse harness that was installed on here. This is actually for a trailer wiring on the vehicle. So we put it on this side of the post because the trailer wiring doesn't need to operate when we're in flat tow mode. So everything that's going to be on this side well, with the battery cable when we hit our button is going to be depowered. But anything that's still on this cable will, will remain powered up because it's connected directly to the battery. So on this side, instead of if we move this tab out of the way and secured it over here, we just took the cable labeled battery post. We put it, slid it down onto the stud here and then reinstalled the nut with our 13 millimeter socket. After we did that, we did go back and tighten down our uh, clamp here just to make sure that that's not going to rotate and it's secure to the battery post. So we can go to reinstall our cover now, but we are going to have to make some minor modifications to the cover for it to fit over our cables. So where the cable's sliding out here, I did trim out um, up there and I even had to trim into the little bit of red piece here a little bit for it to clear. I just used my cutters just to cut up there. Um, it is kind of a brittle plastic, so it does like to break a little bit. Um, so you could file this to make it a little bit smoother. Um, or you could use like a rotary tool to cut it as well. It, it's going to melt the plastic a little bit, but you can get a little bit straighter lines. And on the back side here where the battery cable's coming off, we had to trim out for that cable as well. So that way they can slide back into place there. Additionally, into this little trim here, you've got these kind of wavy section here. We had to trim out some there as well uh, for it to clear, to allow it to reinstall. We're now inside the vehicle on the driver's side. If you're looking straight back, kind of just to the left of where the brake pedal is, uh, you'll find a grommet on the firewall here on the inside. That's where we poked that gray wire through. And after we poked it through that grommet, we're gonna feed it to a location where we can mount our button. And we're gonna do that at the lower left corner of our dash. So you saw our wire there where it came through the grommet. I just went ahead and routed it following the factory wiring here and pulled it through this opening here on the top. This is just your fuse box. Uh, cover right here, it just pulls off of there. And then we got the, our wire just kind of hanging out right here for now. We're gonna mount our button right in this location. We have easy access to it with this cover out of the way and it's even open here on the bottom. You can see you can pass your hand straight through. So this is a really good spot to put our button right here next to the hood release. We are gonna use a step bit to mount our button. And this is the button that comes with your kit that we're gonna be mounting. So we're gonna just enlarge a hole here with our step bit until our button can pass through. It's kind of the easiest way I found to do it um, when working with the, these little buttons. So we're just gonna get our hole roughly where we want it. That looks like a pretty good spot right there. Right, and after we drill it so far there, we're gonna check our button fit. And that is a pretty good fit right there. So that's where we're gonna stop. Just push our button back through. There is kind of some stragglers here from it being a step bit. So I'm just gonna grab my razor knife and just kind of trim out uh, the little stuff that you see there. So that way our button fits a little bit cleaner. All right, so I cleaned up our hole here. We're gonna take the nut, just unthread it from the back of your switch. Go ahead and feed your wiring through that, and then you can feed your wiring down through the hole. So we need the nut to be on the other side there. We're just gonna pull that through. We can trim off our excess. I like to leave some just to make it easier to work with. So we're gonna trim it maybe about like here. 
And then we need to trim off some of our wiring, our sheathing here. There's actually two wires inside of this gray sheathing that we need to access. So we're gonna try to gently just get the outer sheathing off of there. There we go, we've got our outer sheathing off. Looks like we did strip the black wire a little bit along the way, it's no big deal. Once you strip a little bit off of it, you're actually gonna see this, uh, like a string inside of here. That string's purpose is to actually cut the sheathing. So if you just pull it like that, see I pulled it and it actually slit down the side of our sheathing for us. Now we can trim off that excess sheathing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off uh, this little excess that we've got here. That way we get clean wires to work with. All right, so that's good. We got, got our wire pulled through. We've got easy access to both the black and red wire inside of our, our sheathing here. You can trim off the uh, little string if you want as well, just to get it out of the way. So now we'll strip back each one of these, give these a little twist, and then we can connect it to our switch. So now we'll take our switch and we're gonna unthread the screws here on the back. We don't need to completely remove them. We're just trying to unscrew them enough to where we can slide our wires through the holes. So if you look through the little holes, you'll see the screw moving out of the way. And now we can slide a wire into that one. Same with the other hole here. Just a little Phillips screwdriver to do that. Now that we've got them both opened up, we can take our wires, line it up with the holes there, slide them through, and then we'll just tighten these back down. All right, and then once you get them sort of snug, I like to twist it a little bit here so I can get a little better grip just to make sure that they're gonna get secured all the way. All right, we've got both of our wires connected there. So now we can just take our switch here, push it into place, and then you can thread your nut on the back side. And we really don't need to go crazy tight with the nut. That's kind of the reason why I like using the step bit is because you can slightly undersize the hole a little bit using that step bit so our switch is, is a nice snug fit in there. It's not gonna move around or anything. So that way we don't need to tighten the nut crazy tight either because it's not gonna come out of there with a nice snug fit like that. And it looks good in the dash, feels good in the dash, and the button press is good. So we gotta go hook up our ground wire underneath the hood. The white wire that's coming off of the solenoid, we're gonna hook to ground. And here on the driver's side near your strut tower, there's a ground stud right here that we can attach it to. So we're gonna put a ring terminal on this, strip back your wire. I like to give it a little twist just to make the strands slide into the ring terminal a little bit easier. We'll then grab our ring terminal here. We're gonna use and we're gonna attach it to our wiring. So this comes in your kit. Just attach it right onto that white wire. Crimp it down. And then we'll remove the nut off the ground stud. You'll use a 10 millimeter socket to do so. Simply slide your ring terminal over the stud and then reinstall the nut. And then lastly, now that we got our ground hooked up, just take your fuse and insert it into the fuse holder here, right next to your solenoid. So we just went ahead and opened the door here. We can see no dome lights, nothing like that came on. We're gonna hit the button. Heard the solenoid click. We can see the components on our dash are lighting up. Um, I could hear what sounded like an actuator, probably for our HVAC system moving in there. Uh, the door is just locked. We've got power to, to things now. Go ahead and hit our start button here. And it's requesting us to hold the brake so that way it'll start. So everything looks good here on the vehicle. 
We are powered up, dome lights are on, all that. So at this point, everything looks like it's working properly. If you were gonna place it into flat tow mode and you have to disconnect the battery afterwards, hit the button again. And you can see there with the click of a button, uh, we've now completely disabled all the power to our vehicle. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's battery disconnect switch on our 2021 Buick Encore GX.